So let's just start off with how much revenue you made uh, in 2022, the correcting market. 150000 Coming from where I came from, I would have never thought I would be at this point in my life. If you get up and go do it, this business will literally change your life. This time we're in New Jersey with Signing Agent Elias. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm so good. So thankful for your, your journey, like everybody's journey, is super inspiring. So let's just start off with how much revenue you made uh, in 2022, the correcting market. 150000 In 2022, when everybody says the market is correct and you're out there proving people wrong, so excited to tell your story and share with everybody um, how great this business is if you put your mind to it and you put sure. effort behind it because your story is inspiring, your why is huge, and so therefore you figured out how to make it happen. So, so happy. Uh, we're filming this in February 2023. Uh, January, uh, how much you make last month in January? Gross revenue. 15,000. I mean, it's coming back. The market's coming back. I'm excited for you, man. So, you know, when you say those numbers, right? You say 150K, when you say $15,000, like, how does it make you feel? Amazing. Um, Coming from where I came from, I would have never thought I would be at this point in my life. At this point at all, actually. 15,000 is... Old Elias would have been like, hey, man, you're doing great. I love it, man. Um, well, speaking of the where you came from, let's break that story down, right? I think you've seen enough of these episodes where, you know, it's all about just telling people your journey. So um, let's start kind of like at the point where you kind of had to make the decision to, to get into this business. Why did you get into this business? And uh, take it away, man. Well, Mark, uh, this one's a complicated one. March 2020. COVID hits. Uh, my wife loses her job and I'm at a dead end job. I'm distraught would be probably the best word for it. We have three kids and I'm not making enough money to support our whole family. It's a lot of kids. It's a lot of mouth to feed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm shaking <laughs> just thinking back to this. <laughs> I'm shaking. And I mean, we, we had to find a way to support our family. So my wife had a notary commission before this and started looking to some way to provide for our family. Mm -hmm. And we found the LSS course, mm -hmm. showed my wife, I, I was interested in myself. I, we both took the course and just started running with it eventually my my wife started doing closings herself and the rest she, is history <laughs> yeah much, let's yeah. take people back though you know and, and thank you for being vulnerable and the fact that you said you were literally shaking right it's your wife lost her job it's covid you know you're in a position where you just said i couldn't afford to to feed the entire family with my salary yeah. um you know, if you could, and, and I say that because I want people to see that you can come from here and be here where you are today, right? And so what feelings were going through when that moment happened with your family, right? I mean, you, you're the man of the house, you know, quote unquote, uh, you, you, you had this moment of like, I don't know how we're going to pull us off. Plus we had the uncertainty of just the pandemic in general, right? So yeah. there must've been like emotions of layers there, or layers of emotions, excuse me. Uh, I, I kind of talked through that, right? So People know that like, and, and the reason I ask you to share that so that people know anyone can build this business, no matter where you come from, right? And so talk through some of that if that's cool. I was making at the time, maybe $550 to $600 every week. That's nowhere near enough to support a family. I felt of a less, less of a man, mm. to, to be honest with you. I felt less of a man because... I come from a traditional family and we're to me, I'm supposed to provide for my family. I'm supposed to be there for my family and I couldn't be there and I couldn't provide. And my wife loses a job and we can't, we can't afford our, our life. 
it's amazing what you can do when you have to do it. Right. And, and so sometimes, you know, I tell a lot of students is like your journey is what makes you a great business owner. You know, if you weren't backed in the corner, quote unquote, who knew this amazing business was on the other side of this unbelievably terrible time. Right. And so, yeah. um, it's just crazy how life works is my point, right? It's just like, if there wasn't that moment, then you would never been forced to do that Google search, how to make money yeah. with a notary commission, right? COVID was the worst thing, but the best thing that could have happened to me. COVID put my behind on the fire mm. and I had to figure out a way. And it was that simple. No, I love it, man. And And so... You, you know, what was your wife feeling at that time? Right. I mean, I mean, was it this, a moment of confusion, chaos? I don't know what word. I mean, t you tell me three children, mouth to feed 500 bucks a week, dude. Like I, I can feel the pressure of the world coming down on you. Cause I, I, as you're retelling this and reliving this, like what was your wife saying and doing? Luckily for us, we had money saved up mm -hmm. in the account. Mm -hmm. be able to make us last through a certain period of time but that money wouldn't last forever mm -hmm. so for us it was fear would be the best word to describe it just maybe even dread just completely mm -hmm. utter dread of what's going to happen tomorrow yeah well, you know, what's really cool about you sharing this is, you know, you have used your words fear and instead of you guys choosing that she chooses the notary entrepreneur route, you know, she could have chosen the nine to five. And so it's amazing how like some dominoes fall because you could have been like, okay, we were scared. We're fearful. Like you said a few bucks, but then you're like, you know what? Let's do entrepreneur. <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus let's go get a nine to five. So kind of talk through that, right? Cause, and I say that because there's probably people watching this right now who are like, oh man, like, do I go get a nine to five? I'm looking to make more money. What was the family decision and dynamic around? Okay, we're not gonna look for another job, but let's get you into this business. Although we felt utter dread and fear because of what was going on in the world, we had sort of a safety net with that savings and we've tried other businesses before and we had failed mm -hmm. i would i mean i'd go as far as to say i i had failed so we were always looking for something mm -hmm. that could provide for our family and for generations to come and this just it just seemed like the right way to go. Just loan yeah. signs, just, it just clicked. For some reason, I, I don't know how to describe it. It just, just clicked. I think what clicked is that you're meant to be an entrepreneur. Well, I think they say every successful entrepreneur has like seven on average failed businesses. And I think that's an inspiring part of your story. Cause I don't know. I didn't know the answer until I asked it. You didn't give up on the dream, right? You didn't give up on the goal. You didn't give up on the generational right. income and even in the darkest time, you didn't give up on it, right? It could have been so easy to be like, babe, go get another nine to five, right? Go get something with a guaranteed paycheck. I think a lot of people would never have blamed you for that decision. But I think it's really cool how like, you're just an entrepreneur at heart, right? And I love how you have a wife who supports that. She obviously made the decision with you. And I think it's a beautiful thing because I think a lot of people are scared, but they live scared also. You guys were scared, but it still didn't deter you from making the best that best decision of you and your family. And I think that's a beautiful thing, man, because I think there's a lot of people who just they act out of fear and that's why they stay complacent. That's why they stay where they are. I mean, this is crazy, dude. Like, you know, we're in the most uncertain time in probably our lifetimes. You know, your wife loses her job, but yet you still choose the uncertain entrepreneur route to feed three children and two adults. What was the mindset behind that? Because I think a lot of people are scared to be entrepreneurs and you made that decision in the middle of COVID. We could have went the route of finding a nine to five. That is definitely an was an option. But where is the security in that in the future? We just experienced COVID, but something always happens. Yeah. 2008 happened. Right. COVID happened, right? Totally right. People think a nine to five is secure. 
but your wife just proved it was not secure. She just got laid off, right? Yeah. It's this idea, and I love what you said. And I was like, wow, that's so good. It's like we think a job is a secure job, but it's not. Anything can happen, just like you said. And so thinking and beginning in nine to five is secure is actually kind of an illusion that you were not unaware of. And it's like, look, you can go get a nine to five, but who knows where COVID's going to be? You can be back out being unemployed, or we can try to start something and finish it because we believe in, in, in you. We believe that you can do this. Oh my God. I knew something was in there, you know, cause I think people do have an illusion that a nine to five is, is, a secure thing and it really no. is as secure as events right no it's not it's just a snap of a finger and your your job is gone right. i mean right now period people are experiencing that they thought that their jobs were secure they everybody was making all this money but now like they're out of a job yeah no this is this is an incredible story you know speaking of that right snap of the finger rates dropped okay rate drops in 2022 you're one of my students who got involved, you know, during the pandemic, right? And, and truth be told, it was easy to be a signing agent during the pandemic. The flip side of that is we had a correction in 2022, right? We're starting to come out of the correction in 2023. You had a great month last month. We see inflation getting under control, but 2022 was a different story, right? 2022 yeah. was uncertainty again, but not just for your family now, for everyone who's signing agents coming out of this great time. And the reason I say that is, you know, what clicked for you during the correction? Because we have a lot of signing agents out there who will go on chat boards during 2022. They don't say that anymore because business is picking back up. But in 2022, they're like, oh, it's a terrible time to be a signing agent, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't that get you distraught? Why didn't you play victim to that? You actually excelled in 2022. You're the best year as a signing agent in 2022. So give me through the mindset of like, you know, why you have clients their volume dropped. Take me back. Take me back. What's the mindset? What are your next steps? Show me that picture. Things weren't great for everyone. But the fact of the matter was I've experienced working. Nine to five would be a, a nice way to put it. I, I experienced that. I used to work eight to seven, eight to eight. There were, there were days I'd get home at like nine o'clock mm -hmm. right i experienced that and there was no way in hell that i would be <laughs> going back to that right so that was i mean that was a drive my behind was against the wall and i just grinded it out there, there's just no way i was gonna go back to my job that's <laughs> one <laughs> way to put it no, and I love it. And 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 you you mean it's crazy to think that you're working, you know, eight. Sometimes you said you come home eight AM, you sometimes come home at nine. You have yeah. a family of three, right? So there was obviously your children who were getting the short end of that stick, right? And so it, it, it must have been a just a, an accumulation of like now you're a business owner and you can see your kids whenever you want. You're like, Well, take the day off today, I will, you know what I mean? Versus, you know, I'm not going back to that. So and, and what, what I hear is someone whose why is just so big that I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to do it. So talk people through that. What did you do? Your volume dropped. You have a current set of clients. Their volume dropped in 2022, right? Your back's against the wall. I'm not going back to working for a nine to five. What are the next steps? What is the mindset? What are you doing? I hit the pavement, shook hands, kissed babies. Mm. That's it. That's it. Out and, and, on the road. And it's Not funny. It comes so natural to you. you're like shook hands, kiss babies, got on the road. And I think, I hope everyone's inspired by that. Right. Because there, in 2022, there was two signing agents. There's ones who played victim to it, complained that it was slow. And there was people like you who said, let's get back to work. Right. Let's get back to fundamentals. I can, if I have 10 clients, I just need 20 clients. Right. If 10 yeah. clients were feeding me 10 signings each, I need 20 clients feeding me five to make up for that loss. And I hope people hear that, right? Because even in an expanding market, frankly, that should always be your mindset, right? And sometimes we, it's able, we're able to get uh, comfortable is the word I'm looking for. But I love that you just said, I got to get back to work. I got to get back to hit the pavement. And I want 
signing agents to hear that because there were signing agents making a ton of money in 2022. And frankly, with such a good January, my belief is you had a good January because of the effort you're putting out in 2022. It's like, look, I sowed so many seeds in 2022 that when the market starts doing better, I'm going to be exponentially busier. And that's what I want people to hear, right? We're not out of the woods by any stretch. Inflation is oh. starting to get under control, but that's not relevant to you. It's like, I, I will do whatever it takes to build a business because I'm not going back. I got to see my family. Am I, am I hitting some topics here that resonate? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you just actually reminded me today, uh, President's Day, uh, me, and, me and the kids, we were over there playing Sorry, right? right? The game. I don't know if you've ever yeah, played yeah, it. My, my, my kid's five. We play Sorry once a week. He loves it. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, we were playing Sorry. I mean, if I were at a, my old job, I would be working today. I wouldn't have time with my family. Right. No, it's a beautiful thing, man. You're a beautiful father. I mean, what I hear is a signing agent puts everything into perspective. Like I'm not going back to 95. It's not the market dropped. Oh my gosh. It's the market drop. Okay. How do I got to fix my income levels? Like, it's just, let's get to the next step. It's, you know, there's no time to play victims, feel sorry. It's just, I got to get to the next step. Right. And, right. and, and I hope everybody's hearing the mindset. That's why I love bringing you signing agents on. It's like, you know, there's too many students out there. And I said, students of ours, you know, like just play victim to the scenario instead of taking control of the scenario. Mark, pound the pavement, shook hands and yeah. kiss some babies. That's it. It's really kind of that simple. I don't mean to oversimplify it, but it really is just kind of that simple. And yeah. so this is a beautiful story. So, you know, let's kind of get back to the journey and your income journey. And so, your wife, you know, you do go through all that. You, you shared your feelings. You're like, babe, this is the gig for you. Your wife starts being a signing agent. Talk me through her first couple months and then kind of what you're seeing still working this nine to five that you loved so much. <laughs> My wife starts doing signings and I mean, right off the gate. Yeah, everything was it was great booming. And she was she made like a thousand, right? Then she made like. 2000 and then she was hitting like that 3000 range and i'm like well damn <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm making i'm making 3000 while working from eight to seven yeah. like uh, you're making 3000 like in a few appointments here and there you got hella time you're uh. just chilling and i'm <laughs> I'm over here carrying like these hospital beds up like five flights of stairs. Yeah, no, that I, that was like the the trigger point for me. Yeah. When I saw that, when I saw the potential, I had to get in it. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I think it's so beautiful to... that your wife inspired you. You know what I mean? It's like, I think it's just a beautiful thing that, so you see your wife crushing it. Take me to the next steps, right? You're like, babe, okay, cool. You're in New Jersey. You get your notary commission. Yep. Okay. So take me through being a part-time signing agent. Walk me through a few of those, th th that, that part of your story. So, uh, after the course, signed up with a few signing services, and I started working part-time after work. I didn't have a lot of time to work after work, and I was taking like these late 6 o'clock appointments to 7 o'clock appointments whenever I could if I was able to. And how long did you take to give notice that, you know, you're seeing your wife do well, you know, consistent income. It's probably good. Mm -hmm. You're starting to get a few appointments here and there. You told your job you're going to quit in how many months? I told them I was going to quit in two months. Okay. So why so long? You see your wife doing it, right? She's been doing this now at this point. My guess is at least three or four months. Yeah. You're seeing her be consistent. You're getting the consistent, you know, part-time business, but instead of giving two weeks, you give it two months. Why? It goes back to the old theme of just fear. Mm. Although I saw the potential in it, I didn't see the potential in me because I had failed so many times in previous ventures. I figured I might fail on this one too. Wow. So I gave them two months heads up because I'm like, maybe if I give them two months heads up, if I leave and it doesn't work out, uh, after giving them two months heads up, I can come back. 
I appreciate that vulnerability, man. And, and, and I think a lot of people doubt themselves when they shouldn't, right? Cause if you can do it all over again, you would have gave deuces way sooner than two months is my guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, would have never started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, babe, we're taking the course same time. Um, but I think that's very powerful because you're not the only person to not believe themselves or, or almost start trusting them less, right? Themselves less is what I should say. And so, you know, you know, if you could build this business, you think anybody can, man? Easily. Just follow the steps, work hard. You can do it. It's not rocket science. No. You know, I, the, the hardest part, I think, is believing in yourself, right? It is. And I, and I thought it was an appropriate time to ask that question because, you know, there are probably people who doubt them and, and you just admitted that I did for a moment, right? And so if you can doubt yourself and be at where you're at, I mean, I think almost anybody can. I was trying just kind of taking those steps. And what I love about your journey, and thank you for being so honest, by the way, is I tell you students slow as a speed, like it's, it's great. It took you two months. Like that's not a knock against you. Right. It's, I only yeah. shared that so people can see that this is a normal journey. And yes, there's some people who dive head in first. There's some people who make 6,000 bucks in the first 30 days, but that's not the, that's the exception, not the rule. Doubting yourself is very normal. And I, I just want to normalize that conversation, right? It's, it's doubting yourself is normal. If it takes you two months to, Believe in yourself, that's okay. It's just not giving up on yourself, I think is probably the most important thing to say. Would you not? For sure. No, that's a fact. Um, the biggest hurdle for yourself is not other people. It's not society. It's your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind is what holds you back almost all of the times. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was Will Smith that said it. He was just afraid of going skydiving. Mm -hmm. But when he jumped off that plane, there was just bliss yeah. at the end of like right. on the other side of fear, That's right. there's bliss. That's right, man. It doesn't matter if it takes you two months to jump off that plane. Whatever you got to do is you just got to keep building confidence because whether it's two months or two hours, like it just, just keep building it and not give up on yourself. And I think this, that's, this is a story of someone who didn't give up on themselves, right? You failed at all. You're an entrepreneur at, at heart. Like this is your jam, but it's, it's harder to take that risk when you have another fail stack up and stack up and stack up. And I speak from experience, by the way, I'm also an entrepreneur at heart, right? This is not my first business, right? I was also trying to do other businesses while I was a signing agent. And so I know what it, those, those wounds, they, they're real. And you start doubting yourself. I'm like, am I as smart as I think I am? And so I don't know if you had those moments. I did as I go, I think I'm smart. Then how come I'm failing so much? And so it makes the next project that much harder to start. But um, I just want to say I'm proud of you, man, because you didn't give up on yourself and you're vulnerable with saying it took me two months to believe in myself that I can actually do this full time. Even though you're seeing your wife do it, even though you're seeing orders happen two, three times a week for yourself, there was still two months of like, I don't know if I could do that. And so um, I think it's really vulnerable and raw and, and thank you for sharing that, man. Let's get to the income journey, right? So your first month, how much you make in the business part-time that first month, what did you make? 200. 200 bucks. Okay. Yeah. So, and I only giggle, not because of the number, because of the story you just told me, right? You told me that, you know, you failed at so many businesses. Your first month, you're like 200 bucks. Are you seeing that as a wild success or is it, is it almost building on top of that? Am I good enough to succeed? Right. I mean, talk to me through that. I failed so hard on previous, on the past that succeeding with 200 it it was a confidence boost oh, i love it because what i heard there dude was perspective right I, I heard like you're not me and you're entrepreneurs we can probably jam about entrepreneur stuff all day i know how hard it is so when you actually make money it's like whoa that's incredible because some people who are not entrepreneurs come into this business and they don't realize that building a business is actually hard. This one just happens to be fairly simple. Some people come into this business making 200 bucks. They think they fail, but you're like, dude, you, like of all the business I ever started, this is the easiest one. Like 200 bucks is a win. 
versus this mindset of like 200 bucks a bad month. Yeah. So going to month number two, you make 200 bucks, month number two, part-time. Uh, month number two, I made a thousand. I mean, at this point, you must be like, yo, <laughs> you're right. I, this is, this is it. Yeah, for sure. You'd think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but after that month, um, I sort of quit. I stopped. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, not because I've wanted to, because I was so busy with work that I didn't have time to. Mm. You know, it's crazy, man. After, you know, hearing everything has told me, I, I, I think it even gets deeper than that. Like you showed pr proof of concept, right? You know, that's an entrepreneur word, proof of concept. And so you made 1200 bucks, but you still doubted yourself to show you how powerful self-doubt is and, and strong. 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 But what I love about you, dude, is you didn't give up on you. And, and that's what I want people to hear in this story is like, you're someone who doubted yourself so much, even after two, what you would call successful months, you still chose the nine to five. And that just shows you how powerful it is, but also shows your perseverance of like, just keep going slow as a speed, right? Your journey is beautiful because it played out the way it's supposed to, right? You're not comparing yourself even to your wife, by the way, who's doing three grand, three grand, three grand. You're not even like, you're just staying, in, you're just focused on your journey. And I think that what really successful entrepreneurs do is just, it's me, my, it's a me versus me battle. Yeah. Not a me versus my wife, me versus the LSS community. No. It's me versus me. And you're just sticking with your journey. So cool. 200, 1,000, pull back. Go back to work. Talk to me. What's next? Go back to work. Um, I'm losing out on a lot of signings. I'm getting notifications on my phone left and right. And I <laughs> added it up once and I had missed about $3,000, close to like $4,000 worth of income wow. where at my work, I would have made much less. Yeah. It's crazy. That, that drove me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Probably drove your wife nuts too, right? She's like, babe, I know how many messages you're getting there because she's getting them. Um, okay, cool. So then you make a decision to go back into this mm -hmm. being a signing agent. Okay, let's take, pick, pick up the story there. Yeah, no. So I, I make the decision to go back into the, that's also around the time where I gave the two months notice because I, I wanted to get into this full time after I saw like I, I missed out on four thousand. I give the two months notice. So for the next two months, I didn't really have time to do closings after work because I was just so crazy busy. Right. So give or take, I maybe made like, you know, another five hundred, six hundred the next month. Mm. I hope everybody's hearing this, right? You're you now have a successful signing agent business. You made six figures. You and your wife made six figures in, in 2022 in a market. You know, you're in New Jersey. You're not in Florida, Texas, or California, right? You have a six-figure business in New Jersey. But it's it was a journey to get there. And that's what yeah. I hope people hear, right? It's, it's not about these stories of, oh, I made money overnight because I never said this was a get-rich-quick scheme. I said, if you want to put in effort and believe in yourself, you can make something out of it. And this is literally the story of slow as a speed. And, and so yeah. thank you for being very open and honest with your journey. Cause I think most signing, a lot of signing agents need to hear this versus, Oh, I made 10 grand my second month. You know what I mean? So you for put sure. your two weeks, you put your two months in. <laughs> I two said weeks. two weeks. I most... <laughs> wish it was two weeks. Should have, should have gave two weeks. You put your two months in and you're like, all right, cool. So yeah, you're officially full time. What are you making your first month? January of that year, I made 3,600, 3,600. By all intent and purposes, you're not burning down the house, right? Like it's, no. it's, again, 3,600. No. Why didn't you see that as, you know, you're seeing some people in the group make, t this is middle of the pandemic, right? And so you see some people making 15,000 bucks, 20,000 bucks a month. You make 3,600 your first month. How come you're not, distraught you're not uh turned off by it like you know like oh you're not playing victim to it like because by the way i think 3600 is incredible i'm just trying to get into the mindset of of slow as a speed because i think you are really really relatable in your journey reason that didn't discourage me and nothing else discouraged me was 
first of all, the 3600 I made that month was on par of what I was making at my job. And I had like 10x more time to yes. do a ton of other things yes. than I would have. You know what I love about you, dude, is it's, it's all perspective. And what's beautiful about your, it's, it's like, I think all your failed businesses led to you to this business. Because, you know, my opinion is, you know, when you're younger and you had started a business and you only made 200 bucks, you probably would have saw that as a failure. The younger you would have probably been like, oh, a thousand bucks, not that great of a business. The younger you probably would have been like, you know, like, cause you know, if it's going to take me six months to make three grand, like this is the worst business idea ever. But because of your journey, it's allowed you to develop a slow as a speed muscle, which I think it is a muscle, right? And then when you get here, because of all your previous experiences, it allows you to see it through a different lens, which I sh think should be yes. talked about. You know what I mean? Because my bet is, you know, eight years ago, $200 in a month, you would have been like, this business is terrible. And so I, I think it's cool that those experiences led you to this because you know, you, you are six, eight months before you really start seeing real traction, by the way, that's normal. But because of your previous experiences that allowed you to see everything in a different light. And, and I hope everyone's hearing this because I think your journey is a very normal journey to six figures, right? It, it's some of these other stories we told, especially during the pandemic weren't, but this is a real story. And so um, anyways, I, I'm putting all the pieces together. I'm just like, your previous failures made you patient is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, for sure. Because the key to any business is truly patience, right? It's truly like effort. Let, let, let me see that go to work. Then Slow I mean, and steady wins the game. Yeah. Right. And Slow you, and steady wins the game. And you are, I mean, I mean, honestly, dude, you and your wife, between the two of you, you guys did 150,000 with your business last year. What kind of conversations come about? Like, are you two just like, <sighs> like, what's that feel like having those conversations? Man, <laughs> it's amazing there's just there's a lack of in english words in the dictionary to describe it <laughs> I mean, so let, let me hit you with some portuguese ótimo okay. maravilhoso it's freaking awesome oh man i mean i just get so excited for you i, I can you know like this is a family business like a real family business you know what i mean about what should your wife do last year in signing agent income more or less? Uh, forty to fifty thousand. I mean, forty to fifty thousand and raising three children. I mean, that's incredible, right? You can have a forty to fifty thousand dollar business and raise a family of three and be and like you said, be present. It's President's Day, and you're able to go out and play with your child, and you don't take that for granted, right? And and it's your wife doing forty fifty thousand, and I think that's incredible while still being a mom. I mean, I'm a father of one, dude. <laughs> I could imagine timing that by three. And so me and my wife talk about this all the time. And so, I mean, I think it's really just, I'm just so happy for you and your family. I mean, she's doing 50, you're doing a hundred with your business. And it's just a combination of just this swell. I mean, you know, you just, yeah. you, your, your signing service is about to go to the freaking moon. You guys are going the next phase of your signing agent career. Uh, I hope everyone's inspired. I mean, you know, husband, wife team, they've built this out for the past few years and now they're turning into a major signing service. You want to plug your signing service real quick for all the LSS notaries to sign up? Notary Capital, MSC Closing Services. Let's go, baby. I'm so proud of you, man. So, I mean, honestly, what a story. Let's get to the good stuff here. If you had one piece of advice, your bestie was like, dude, you're crushing it with this notary gig. But there's probably a million things. You told me to take Mark's course. Okay, I took Mark's course, but I still need one piece of advice that you think if I really uh, got a hook in me, you'd go to the next level. What would that piece of advice be? Put your back against the wall. Put yourself in a position where you have no way out. That's going to drive you. You know, I, I think you have that piece of advice because you had a plan B, that was your job, and you regret it. And then what happened is during the correction of 2022, you literally were like, I'm not going back. Like you you burned the boats, like that one saying is, right? Burn yeah. the boats. Like you literally, 
at 2022 said, okay, cool. The market's correcting. I'm not going back, burn the boats, but it was because you made a very sound decision of I'm not going back to nine to five. You were forcing yourself to go market. You were forcing yourself to shake hands and kiss babies. Like you said, and I love that. I love that. You know, um, I don't think anyone said that in the, in this, I think you're the 66 interview. Like no one's had this idea of like, don't have a plan B because that goes against conventional wisdom. <laughs> like most people are like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But by you putting all your eggs in one basket, you had your banner year during the correction. Yeah. Because you had no plan B. Yeah. And 2023, you're going to scale to the moon because we're we're back. Our rates are going down for the five consecutive months. Inflation's getting under control. Like, I mean, you're going to scale this thing to the moon this year, man. But it's because you burnt the boats. Is there anything else you want to add to that no plan B that you think might help somebody else? I mean, honestly, believe in yourself. <sighs> Your brain is hardwired to try to protect you. Mm -hmm. It's just nature. And... It will do everything in its power to hold you back mm -hmm. from doing something that it fears or that is going to cause you harm. So go against your brain this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and what I love about you and successful signing agents, and I'd actually call you a successful entrepreneur and because I teach you guys that you're not signing agents, you're business owners who happen to be signing agents. But anyways, going against your brain is hard. So if you put yourself in a position where you have no choice, but to do that is really kind of your piece of advice is like, and I love how I had you kind of expand upon that. Cause you're right. It's like everything we do is instinctively to survive. So our brain really is geared as to fear, fear. Yeah. So if you put yourself in a spot where you have no choice, but to face fear, it's amazing what you're capable of. It's amazing what growth is amazing. What happens? You don't know what you're capable of until you put yourself in that position. That's good. And what I, and why I feel coming from you, that's very palpable is because you had the first part of your journey. You didn't believe in you. You had a plan B. And so then when the correction happened, you like, you flipped a 180. like that old me goes out the window. The new me is, no plan B, I'm not going back. And so, you know, where sometimes that could just be kind of lip service, but for you, it wasn't because you were slow and steady wins the race. But when the correction happened, you had to do have a different mindset. Like it's my family or bust. And so it's like, I'm not going back to nine to five. So I still love how you had a banner year during the correction. You know, I know the corrections behind us, yeah. but it's such an inspiring story that you and your family had your banner year while, while the rest of America that isn't LSS was like, it's terrible to be a signing agent. It's not terribly a signing agent. You're just not working. <laughs> I'll add to that too. And, and I'll add to that too and say, we're never going to be put in this position again. Where when she was laid off and you weren't making enough money. So when you say we're never gonna put ourselves in that position again, it's that's like not going to happen. That's not an option. Mm. We have to put ourselves at a point where 2008 happens, COVID happens, and our family is secure. Yeah, it's beautiful, dude. And, and again, it's like part, sometimes it's the journey that creates the thick skin. And I think that you going through that COVID moment made the going through the correction so much easier. As far as a decision to double down is what I should say, right? Knowing because like how you felt as a man, like you shared, and how, you know, I'm not going back to that dude. Burn the boats, 2022, you kick button took names. Let's go. <laughs> I love it because I've had, you know, I've, I've had some of these interviews with students, you know, this year. And a lot of them were, went from like, you know, 150 to 100, or one, you know, 130 to 90. But you had your banner year in the correction. That's what's super yeah. inspiring is like, you, you and your family, you and your wife had the best year in the middle of this correction. It wasn't like you dipped down to 150 as a couple, like you went up to 150 as a couple in this correcting market. And then, I mean, January, you guys already did 15,000 collectively. It's like, I mean, this year is going to be just blow it off the roof. Like, are you excited, man? Are you excited about the future? It's, the future is bright. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that. I mean... Our projections for this year coming, this 
slow year is give or take two hundred thousand up mark. That's yeah. it's a slow year. Yeah. I mean, it will never be 2021 again or 2020, no. but it, it, the market is correcting. Uh, I think 2250 is an easy number because the, the correction is over. Now we're going into a normalized market, right? In a normalized market in this country, we have about 6 million loan originations a year in America. I mean, you get 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% of 6 million, you and your family are doing I, right, you know what I mean? And, and But I love you see big picture, you get it, right? Your signing service is bigger than New Jersey. I mean, you guys are gonna grow this to, you know, you can get clients all over the country. It's not New Jersey that you're, you're concerned with, right? You're, I mean, you no. gotta go down to Florida, you can go to anywhere and market your signing agent business. And, and now knowing your story, there's no doubt that you're gonna build this to Pennsylvania and New York and everywhere you gotta go to where there's loan signings, man. Like the future is unbelievable for you and your family. It's, I love these stories because it just makes me, this is why I do it. This hearing this is why I do it, man. But anyways, enough about me. Um, okay, let's wrap up with this last question. You know, looking back at your journey, right? <clears throat> Before you, your wife started and then you were looking at your wife from a distance, like it's my, <laughs> is it my turn? What was something you were nervous about? Something you were apprehensive about that almost prevented you from doing this business that now has literally changed the course of your family's life? What, what was that for you? So if someone else may be able to relate to it. I didn't believe that I would get signings. Mm. I didn't believe that people would work with me. Even though you were seeing your wife, even though you were seeing all the interviews just like this one. Yeah. Okay? And so I think that's deep, right? Go a little bit deeper because you're probably not the only person who's like, I don't know if I can do this. I saw the potential in the business. I didn't see the potential in me. Oh. Like, that that's something that is going to just I have to drill that in to whoever is watching this. I need to drill that into you. You have potential. You just have to learn to see the potential in yourself. I thank you for speaking to the person who may be feeling like uh, I don't see the potential in me. So how did you see the potential in you? Having my wife as a support. Amazing. But doing the work yourself, putting your feet on the ground mm -hmm. and just proving to yourself mm -hmm. just do it just right. do what you have to do go on the road prove it to yourself you'll start believing in yourself you said it so eloquently is action builds confidence a, a lot of people people want to be confident in something they've never done but like you said just kind of start doing it when the doing is what builds the confidence there's something called a confidence loop where it's like, I start with no knowledge, I do it, I end up with a little bit more. But now you're not starting over at zero, you're starting with a little bit of knowledge. So if you do a little bit more knowledge, you then you circle back. So each time you're stacking the next action with more knowledge, and the more knowledge you have, the more confident you become. However, uh, some people want to be confident by never putting their boots on the ground, like you said, right, by never doing it. So, you know, I love your, your answer of the, the, the way you build confidence in yourself is by just committing to do it. And what I love about this, this story, e, your story is you're the perfect person to be sharing this advice because you literally didn't believe in yourself. It took you six months, even though your wife was doing consistent business, it took you six months to have the courage to quit your job. And so you're the literally the best person to, to, to share this message of like, in order to, to see the potential, you just got to start working. And, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to build the castle tomorrow, just start digging the moat, right? And, and one brick at a time. Yes, <clears throat> yes. And that's what you did. You literally were one brick at a time. 201,000, I quit. Back to doing it. Still didn't believe quite enough. Two more months, finally went full time. Like, th th that's a beautiful story. I love how you, you shared you quit. Even though you were showing success, you still didn't believe enough in you that like, you still chose back the eight to five or eight to eight, like you call it. <laughs> um, man, what a beautiful story, dude. Uh, thank you. Kind of wrapping up this conversation. Is there anything, you know, if somebody's down and out right now, not feeling their potential, doubting themselves, because LSS students watch this, right? Meaning that like someone's bought the course and hasn't done anything for three months. Was there any words of encouragement of someone like doubting themselves, not believing in themselves? Insert the phrase of, of discouragement. Was there anything you want to leave them with to encourage them to like, just get up and go do it. 
if you get up and go do it, this business will literally change your life. Mm. Just believe in yourself. Because everything changed when you did. Yes. When you believed in yourself, and, and the crazy part, my guess is, and just from this conversation, tell me if I'm wrong, is the true self-belief started during the correction when you had no plan B, right? Like business was semi-easy. It was easy until the correction, right? And the correction, you really had to like, it's go time, baby. Yeah. Am I close? There was no way out. Yeah. That was it. In that moment, you're like, I have to believe in myself. There is no plan B. There is no going back to the wife getting laid off. There is no me going back to feeling less of a man. Um, There's wow. no one else. Just just me. Wow. 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 No one's wow. going to no come and save you. Dude, what a great you conversation. Gotta, you got to save yourself. Appreciate you so much for sharing your journey. Uh, again, if you can build this business, anybody can. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah we'll end it with that e i appreciate you dog um hopefully you're gonna go to conference i want to see you at conference let's keep scaling and uh let's have a good 2023 damn right let's do it i'm out bye <laughs>